The embrace of fascist leaders by the West is often explained as a product of Cold War necessity, yet the reality is more complex. From the very beginning of the fascist movement, many Western business leaders not only praised fascists, but offered significant financial, intellectual, and moral support. The case of Spain provides one of the most striking examples. When peasants and workers took control of production, consumption, and social life across much of the country, world leaders united in opposition against them. Their system of self-government threatened not only the fascists and Stalinists, but liberal democracies in America and the rest of the world. The term anarchy is used to indicate chaos, uh, bomb throwing, disruption, uh, criminality. The actual meaning of the term is quite different. It involves mutual aid, cooperation, as close as you can get to pure democracy, real popular control over all institutions, sometimes uh, resistance, usually leaderless resistance. That's partly ignorance and partly uh, a way to undermine efforts to try to achieve a cooperative society with popular control, which of course is obviously very much opposed by elite interests. In this case, when it's talking about the taking of the pues well, of course, you have to have that capacity and that way of thinking de que, que por qué razón vas a coger tú hoy dos kilos de carne si con uno tienes bastante y mañana puedes ir a buscar otro fresco. O un traje, o un traje, o un par de zapatos. Allí se estaba exento de luz, de agua, de escuela, de todo. A, allí no había que pagar nada. Y no, y no había egoísmo de nada. Nada, ni el egoísmo no existía. ¿Cómo va a existir si no hay dinero? Cuando no hay dinero no puede haber egoísmo. Uno dice así, no lo comprende la gente, pero que, que, que no, que se asumió bien. El haber hecho la, la colectividad, como crear la colectividad, de la inmensa mayoría del pueblo, lo encontré muy bien, y estos que no eran sindicalistas ni eran artistas. Era una guitarra de un sindicato grandiosa, y cualquier trabajador, una queja que tuviera, la apuntaba en la, en la pizarra y en la asamblea se discutía. Aquello. El exponer uno, una cosa, era ponerlo, digamos, eh, en armonía de los demás si aceptaban aquel, aquella proposición. Si, si se acordaba bien, si no se acordaba, pues otra cosa, ¿verdad? Pero siempre desde la base. No nos elogiamos porque no mandase el comité regional una cosa. Porque claro, es, cada pueblo tiene su cultura. Por lo tanto, al tener su cultura, tiene sus costumbres. Como son las mismas costumbres nuestras aquí valencianas, como diríamos las andaluces. Compleja. Tienes que ser consciente de que trabajas para ti, entonces, que no mantienes a ningún patrón, aún trabajas con más... Esa forma de operar, esa forma de, de conducirse éticamente en la sociedad sin, sin necesidad de que viniese el gendarme de turno. O sea, la autogestión, eh, yo creo que eh, eh, es la asignatura que... How do the liberal democracies respond? Well, exactly as you'd expect them to. They despise democracy for very good reasons. The masters do not want the ignorant and meddlesome outsiders to run their own affairs because they'll do it at their own interest. And you lose hierarchy and domination and uh, centralized control and all the values that the masters naturally want. So the liberal democracies essentially join forces with the fascists and the communists to destroy the revolution. After they destroyed the anarchist social revolution, then they started fighting among themselves. But the first task for the first year was to make sure that the 
popular revolution was crushed. And of course, the, commun the communists were in fact in the lead. And the fascists, of course, had their own interests. The United States was a little bit marginal at that time. It wasn't the major world power. It was mostly England and France. But Roosevelt also played a role. So there was an embargo passed, uh, which prevented arms from going to the Republic. However, uh, Roosevelt tolerated breaking of the embargo illegally to provide oil to the fascists. The State Department pretended it didn't know. Of course, they did know. I remember this as a child. The left-wing press was reporting it. The government said they never heard about it. And the, of course, the media went along with the government. Years later, the documents came out and they conceded it been happening all along. So yes, uh, Roosevelt was basically supporting the fascist, but primarily destroying the uh, the anarchist revolution, which was a real threat. Un estado totalitario armoniza en España el funcionamiento de todas las capacidades y energías del país, en el que dentro de la unidad nacional el trabajo, estimado como el más ineludible de los deberes, será el único exponente de la voluntad popular. Y me merced a él podrá manifestarse el auténtico sentir del pueblo español a través de aquellos órganos naturales que como la familia, el municipio, la asociación y la corporación harán cristalizar en realidades nuestro ideal supremo. Fascism is a very rational system. It is a instrument by the ruling plutocracy to distract the people with the accoutrements of a false revolution. There's always a false populism, and there's a lot of goose-stepping, and there's a lot of manipulation of symbols and sentiments and love of the state and the like. Much of politics is the rational use of the irrational symbols. So fascism, the attention that when people study Italian fascism, or Nazism especially, they focus on it as a kind of insane movement that just happened, uh, carried on by this m maniac, Adolf Hitler, and the Germans were just went out of their heads and were led astray. In fact, what they tried to do is direct the real grievances of the German people toward irrelevant enemies. <laughs> Fascists came into power, they cut wages by 50%, they destroyed every labor union, they destroyed every opposition party and every newspaper, closed them down, they, they, they abolished all inheritance taxes for the rich or cut them drastically, they, they abolished all cartel taxes for the corporations, um, pretty much what's being done here uh, without having to go politically all that far. So fascism is, a, is an instrument whereby the plutocracy can control and, and affect, hopefully affect a final solution to the class struggle. You totally shatter and destroy and enslave the working class and, and people just uh, have to take it. What substantiates what I just said, that, it, that fascism is an instrument of the plutocracy, is the way the plutocracy acted toward the fascists. Not just the German plutocracy, which gave Hitler enormous sums of money, which enabled him to, to go all over the country, but also the plutocracy of the United States, where all sorts of eminent members of that plutocracy openly supported the fascists. He gave Bob an industry. 